Today, we focus on the beautiful Italian Canadian community in Montreal. And for that, we have a pleasure of a chat with a privileged witness and a prominent member of the Italian community, Rita De Santis. Hello, Antonio. How are you? Rita, I understand that you were born in Italy and as an Italian, of course, I'm curious uh, to know a little bit more uh, of your immigration story. Well, I was born in Palmoli, Provincia di Chieti, in Abruzzo. And we came on the boat and arrived in Halifax on December 20th, 1958. And the first thing that struck me, I was four and a half years old, is that when we went through customs, they gave us something that resembled Western bread. My mother took the bread, made it into a bead and said, we are going to starve in this country. I have friends who are Jewish who tell me their mothers told them exactly the same thing. Uh, and so uh, I come from a little town where today there are about 800 inhabitants. When we arrived here, um, we arrived here because my mother is a family of 10 and um, I have an aunt who came from, who went from Italy to France and from France to America. And if you're going to America, where were you gonna go? You were gonna to go to Quebec, Montreal. And uh, so she arrived in uh, 1952 and then the rest of the tribe, because I call it the tribe, followed suit. And when we arrived, it was because my maternal grandparents were also coming here. So this tribe of 10 children and their families and the grandparents were in Montreal altogether. It's because of the public school system that existed in Quebec in the 60s that I was able to excel and to dream that I could do anything. And a father who always told me, if you dream of it and you work hard, you can do it. Rita, how was growing up as an Italian in Montreal? I had one leg in my home and the other leg in my school, and I wanted to belong to both worlds, and you're divided. But I knew always that my parents loved me unconditionally, and what helped me survive was that I never went out when I was young, because I knew that if I went out with someone, I would have to marry him, because that was the norm at that time. Rita, we all know that you have the beautiful opportunity to serve in the Quebec National Assembly from uh, 2012 and 2018. In 1979, when I was a law student at McGill, there was a young man, Gino Bodja, who kept bugging me to go to a meeting of the Quebec Liberal Party, and I refused. He was so persistent that I, one day I said to Gino, you know, I will go once and then please stop bothering me. Except the day that I went, I met John Chacha. I met the former minister of health. I met so many people and I was, you know, en français, in French, we say, I, I, I got the, uh, you know, the needle in my arm and I, I became very involved so that in 19, at the end of 1970, in 1979, we knew that Quebec was going to have a referendum. We didn't know when. So I was hired by the party to, uh, to reach out to the ethnic communities at that time. That was my first encounter with politics. And then I remained involved with the Quebec Liberal Party until 2012 when, uh, I was recruited and I decided to run in a riding in Montreal, which is called Bourassa Sauve, which is composed of 90% of uh, Montreal North. Montreal North was created for the Italian community in the 60s and 70s. Today, uh, the uh, people of Italian origin who remain there are a minority. There are far more people of Haitian origin 
and of uh, who come from northern, uh, you know, the uh, Arab, uh, who are of Arabic origin and Muslim who are there than, than Italians. It has changed enormously. Rita, we all know that you were a part of important charity uh, associations and organizations, the Congresso, the, the Chiba, where you help a lot of students. In 1971, I uh, was in grade 11, and uh, on the bulletin board, I saw a notice regarding the Chipa. At the time, it was a, a group of businessmen who put some money together to give scholarships to people who got the best marks on their provincial uh, leaving exams. And uh, so I applied, but let me tell you what happened. I'm a girl. The Chipa was a men's association and uh, they would not tally up my marks properly. So they wouldn't, they did not give me the prize for the best marks that went to a boy. They gave me a prize nevertheless. I was willing to fight it out. My mother said, you know what? Be happy with what they gave you. Eventually I became the chair because uh, this Chipa Foundation was finally created to help students. And I became um, the person responsible for fundraising for a period of 10 years. And I remember the first time, the first year, I went back and gave my story. But I said, now where are the boys? Because we're giving out more in uh, scholarships and bursaries to girls and boys. And that doesn't make me happy either, because I want to see a proper uh, balance between uh, the success that our students are going to have in university and beyond, or not even university, even in the trade schools and beyond. Rita, thank you so much for taking the time to answer our questions. <laughs>